Hello everybody, I wanted to make a little video about uh, Kangle, this newest raid that just came out in the western version at the time of this upload. Um, this fight features four boss fights and some of them are a bit tricky to learn how their patterns actually work so I wanted to offer some uh, sagely advice on how to min-max your damage and some of these more awkward battles uh, with some advice that actually a lot of people even in Korea don't know including discoveries that were made by me and some of my friends um, so we're going to start actually at gate 2 because gate 1 doesn't really have anything in particular at the beginning of the fight he always actually starts with the same pattern every single time so he's always going to do um, some sort of motion where it's just going to be forward forward and then quick dash forward without fail that will always occur so you can always get like a guaranteed hit right from the very beginning okay so when you see Tian brandish his sword at the very beginning of this motion he's going to aggress onto a target the moment it's a little bit difficult to tell who he's aggroed on but I kind of figure it's me because uh, well, actually, I just didn't see where the other player was, so I just assumed it was me. So uh, what I did is I went for a back attack, and if you've ever um, watched Clown, uh, you know uh, the advice on how the Pigeons mechanic works. Actually, it, it works the same way here. So at the beginning of the pattern, he aggressed onto me, and I moved up here to get a back attack. Now he's going to draw a straight line from the center of his hitbox to the center of my hitbox, and then a set distance on the opposite side of that he will teleport. And so after I go for the back attack, you're going to see I'm going to displace forward with LTS. And here you're going to see me ping up here because I know he's going to appear up here. So the moment he disappears, I'm going to start moving up here and move to the side so I avoid this attack after. So at the beginning of this pattern, he's untargetable and he throws his sword down to this bottom area. Uh, the thing is, the actual motion of throwing the sword down is an attack, so if you're standing here, you're going to take damage. The weird thing about this pattern, though, is that the actual damage and the knockdown are disjointed from the animation. And this has basically never been fixed because no one in their right mind stands there. But if you stand in this spot, you're going to notice that before he even throws his sword, you take damage and get knocked down. And then the animation happens afterwards because of the disjoint. So what this means is, as soon as you see him throw his sword and it's down there, this part right here doesn't do damage. The damage already happened like two seconds ago. Meaning the moment he throws a sword down, it's safe to maneuver down here. Now, the moment he comes down, his animation, um, I'm sorry, his hitbox is not actually available yet. So if you try and launch an attack at him here, it won't actually hit him. Uh, the moment you see his head attack and back attack um, markers appear, he's vulnerable. Uh, this area down here becomes a death zone and you can see the expanding lines the expanding vertical lines in the left and the right when they reach the edge it becomes a death zone that does very high damage so as long as you do your damage and move out before it reaches that point uh, you'll be safe so with striker this is probably the most stylish uh, one or one of the most stylish ones where you can actually move behind him here charge an lts at an angle where the left side of your LTS or right side if you're going from this side will hit him in his back attack position while you exit. So that's a cool extra 110 million damage there that otherwise you know people are just standing up here waiting for the pattern to start which is a little boring. Uh, an unrelated note and it's more troll than it is real advice if you stealth robe and you're the target of the spear and you use the stealth robe right before he throws it, it'll actually adjust his target on the fly to a different player, and he'll usually not be prepared for that. So that's uh, troll advice, not real advice. Don't actually do it, or if you're going to do it, just do it to your friend. And you might not be friends afterwards, though. This attack is pretty cool, this kind of flipping attack that he does. Uh, if he does decide to do the second part of it, where he flips the other side again, Standing right in front of him will actually make you, uh, you won't get hit by anything because he'll jump over you, kind of like that. And so you can kind of expect it uh, if he does the follow-up afterwards. 
Whenever he does a red stabbing sword, it's going to be slash slash stab. If it's red, I would strongly recommend that a tankier player or a support get stabbed by it because he does a follow up attack afterwards that keeps him still for a pretty long time and it's a great damage window. Uh, if you have a tanky player get stabbed by each of these every single time, it creates a lot of great damage windows for the DPSs. Just don't mistake it with a white stab that has no red because the white stab does not stab the player it launches them and when the edges of the map have been broken it will launch them right off the edge and to their death priyuna's gravity lift attack uh, will only lift you in the air if you're standing in it the moment the telegraph is finished as you can see i can actually just walk into it without any repercussion and then I get out before the slam afterwards, because if you're standing in it during the slam down, it'll just knock you down on the ground and interrupt your skill usage. So you can move in it and greet a little bit and move out. Whenever Priona teleports in gate three, she only has two types of teleports. She'll either teleport to the center facing downwards, or she'll do a different teleport, which I'll cover in just a moment. If she's doing the teleport facing downwards, you can always position yourself above her to get a guaranteed back attack uh, in advance. So whenever she teleports, if you don't think it's going to be the other teleport, you should position yourself up here and get an extra attack in. Whenever she teleports here and people attack her from the back, there's a chance that she does a special follow-up attack where she backsteps upwards and shoots a cone downwards. But the back attack position is still in the 12 o'clock if she does this. So if you're back attacking, always be prepared for her to do that backstep. And if she does, then you get an even bigger damage window. Priyuna has a special thing about her where even though her stagger bar is locked the entire fight, stagger does affect her she's one of the few enemies in the game that have a special stagger trigger when you fill an invisible threshold when dealing enough stagger she will immediately interrupt whatever she's doing and then teleport to a random area and immediately do a circle donut uh, where inside is safe this occurs when you do enough stagger, which means that parties that have heavy stagger in their comp, such as ones with gun lancers and destroyers, will actually see this interruptive pattern more often, which is great because it's a pretty good damage window. But do note that immediately after it ends, she will track a player to do a pretty moderately damaging attack right in front of her. So please be aware that if you're going for the back attack that she might turn to face somebody, which can screw up your back attack. The other enemy in the game that does this is Kaliligos. When Kaliligos takes too much stagger, instead of getting knocked down on the ground, he does the Thunderdome where you don't attack him or else he retaliates. During this mechanic, I always recommend that you grab the orb from a little bit further away because if you're too close to her hitbox, it's possible to get hit by two orbs at once, which will instantly kill you. I would also be very mindful of any cleanses, whether that be from a support or from a purify rune, which is especially the case after a con comes out if you left a purify rune on one of your skills and you didn't realize it. If you're having trouble aiming the laser during gate 4, I would recommend you hit Alt X to hide the bottom HUD. This is especially the case if you're the fourth laser that has to aim it at L'Oreal as oftentimes you'll be put in a position where L'Oreal is in your 6 o'clock and he can be obscured by your HUD. And so pressing Alt X to hide your HUD can help to make sure that you don't miss that laser downwards off screen. Whenever he does this forward motion where he kind of flies forward and then shoots a laser, there's two lasers that he can draw with this. So you're going to see a straight line forward. That means that's going to make an asterisk shape or a star, meaning directly behind him is dangerous. And so we should go slightly off kilter to the left or right in order to avoid that. He can also make a diamond shape, and if he does make the diamond shape, then it will do a donut safe around him instead. So paying attention to that is a good way of knowing how to pre-position yourself in advance to get an extra attack off. During this mech, you can also DPS. Uh, I like to pop a sprinting rope here to make sure that I move faster than these um, circular things. Just make sure not to get caught by it. 
If anybody gets hit by that pull afterwards, he'll do a yank in afterwards. If nobody gets hit by the cone, then there's no follow-up attack. This mechanic is probably the one that gets people the most. Uh, these shadows are the same as the one that you experience at the 100 line mechanic, but at the same time, the boss is doing the mirror mech where he targets one player and then does a cone-shaped pull on them. Uh, this will yank everybody, and in some cases, it does a super yank, which will drag them much further than usual. These shadows are the same shape, um, and each clock position has its own. So there's one at 9 o'clock, 11, 12, 1, 3, 5, 6, and 7. The shapes are always the same in each of the positions, and some of them are easier than others. This one is the easiest because you can actually just run against the left side of the wall here and you'll always be safe even if he super pulls you as it will not be able to drag you out of the shadow altogether. The 6 o'clock shadow is the most dangerous one as the actual area that you have uh, is very narrow and easy to get pulled out of. There is a trick that was discovered by me and Lost Boy and by Lost Boy uh, by me and Lost Boy, I actually just mean Lost Boy. He's the one who figured out the timing for this. Um, and we never posted it on the Korean forums. Uh, but basically, when you're being pulled by the mirror, you're going to see a purple text on your character, like this. If you use any form of displacement skill, as soon as this purple text goes away, it will override the pull altogether. So a displacement skill is anything that moves you or gives you control over your movement while using it. Uh, skills that are animation locked are not good for this because he will actually pull you while you're animation locked, even if you're not supposed to be moved. Even an artillerist in their siege form will get dragged even though they're not supposed to be movable. Uh, channeling your awakening like Berserker's Fury will also result you in getting dragged. So your skill has to displace you. For example, the bullet rain skill by um, Gunslingers or Enforced Execution by Dead Eyes, uh, or really just your space bar. The space bar works for basically everybody here. If you use it just as that purple text is going away, uh, it will not drag you even a little bit. You will not be so much as not. So just wait for the purple text to go away, space bar in, and boom. Not a single nudge. So it's just a way to stupid proof never ever being dragged ever. You can DPS during this pattern. I mean, he's going to die here basically instantly. Uh, but all you need to know is that the red uh, telegraphs after the first one, these red donuts, do not knock you down. These yellow circles do knock you down if they explode on you. So you can paralysis super armor uh, through these donuts. And the yellow circles are generated on every other donut. Uh, lastly, if you do know that you're the aggressed target, um, so you can actually see that uh, the target for this mechanic is actually the striker. The way that I could tell is right before he decided to leave, his character or his model turned to face the striker so see the mechanic is about to start see his head attack position swivels over and targets on the striker remember what i mentioned that this mech is actually just two mechs overlapped on top of each other and so uh it is the same shadow as the 100 line so if the person who has the mirror aggroed on them faces the mirror away from the shadow position the other three players will not actually get dragged at all since they're out of the aoe now of course if you try and face the cone away from the shadow position and that would mean that you would incinerate to death in the sunlight uh, however that's what time stops are for and for people that just want to make sure they get the clear and they're uh, not worried about pumping with atrophin. Well, if you're bringing a time stop and you happen to be the aggro target, you can selflessly uh, move the aggro of the cone away 
from your teammates so they don't have to deal with the pull at all and they can just safely stand in the shadow. Um, but if your teammates do not know that you are doing that, they might spacebar or displace themselves in such a way where they jump out into the sunlight and burn themselves. Uh, so sometimes doing that can actually cause your teammates to accidentally kill themselves. Um, so especially if you're in voice comms, you should be mindful of letting them know uh, that you're facing the shadow away. That's about all I have for advanced tips and tricks for you for this encounter. Uh, I hope some of this information was useful to you.